here we are together again on the radio. And Gary writes in, he says, Tom, I've been listening to you for quite a while now. But I broke the rules. I have really messed up. I met this girl and have known her for over three months now. She has practically been staying at my house for almost two months. She sleeps in my bed naked and... When I try to have sex with her... She says no! I wish I had a recorder. She has probably said no to me over one million times. No, 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 no! She tells me she is not ready for a sexual relationship. Sure, we've had oral before, but it's when she wants it, which is almost never. I'm a good-looking guy, and she is a good-looking girl, but I know what you were probably going to say, that I should have walked already. I have no problem meeting women, but this is getting ridiculous. She told me just recently that she made her last boyfriend wait eight months. I told myself I wouldn't cheat on her. And that I would wait for her. But I have cheated. And I did it with a woman that knows all about my girlfriend. She even came to my house and saw my girlfriend's stuff here. But you know what, Tom? A guy has needs, and I had to do what I had to do. I had to dump that bitch. Thanks, Tom. From lots of sex to no sex, how he signs himself. Now, um, I find this story fascinating, and you, of course, know how I feel about that. Uh, the fact that somebody should not be staying at your house continuously or living at your house. Let me tell you something. When someone stays at your house for almost two months, they're living there. They're living there. You don't want that. And here's one of the reasons why you don't want that. You want sex. She wants to nest with you. She wants to get a commitment from you. She wants to lock you in. And what better way to do it than to move into your place? You kidding me? I must say that I detest all of you women who uh, get naked, sleep with us naked for days, weeks, months. You do it, and then you say, oh, no, I can't have sex. What do you think I am? I mean, why are you uh, getting naked and getting into bed like that? I mean, if you're not ready to have sex, keep your clothes on. Sleep at home. Go home. you got to be kidding me. I don't get it. And uh, I have known women like this. You know, they, uh, they, they, oh, I'll take my clothes off. You mind if I take my clothes off? They take their clothes off. They're, well, good night. Let's just cuddle. We'll just snuggle. We'll just put your leg over me and put your arms around me and just hold me. I, I don't understand that mentality. I don't get it. There are these women out there who think they can get us into a relationship before we ever see, taste, touch, or handle the goods. And um, every once in a while, some guy like this tries doing that. It does not work. It will not work. That's that. And sure enough, you see what happened here. Finally, after two months, he had sex with somebody else. And that brings me to my point. Ladies, I, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it in this context, okay? Vaginas are like buses. First of all, they get old and very smoky. And so, secondly, there's another one coming along every ten minutes. Women act as if they've got the one and only vagina on the planet. And in reality, there are many, 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 many of them around. Many, many. Lots and lots. They come along from time to time. Then, oh, look, there's another one. Oh, look, there's another one. Oh, my God, there's another one. That's pretty much how it works. So women think when they say, oh, no, I'm not ready for a sexual relationship, they think we're waiting. Now, what I want to 
to find out is this, boys. When you meet a woman, I mean, I tell you three strikes and you're out, but I know that's my rule. I'm wondering how long guys really do wait. And when a woman is making you wait, are, have you given up sex? I mean, when you're waiting for a particular woman to put out, do you stop having sex with others? Because I think it's time women learn the real truth. And that is, the longer they make us wait, the more likely it is we're having sex with other people. And they are delusional. They think that we're waiting for the one and only vagina in the world. And the reality is, we're actually getting it someplace else. You, know, you cannot hold that kind of control over us, girls. You can't. But I don't want people to take my word for it. I want to talk to the boys out there, okay? So when you date a woman, let's say she's even a cool chick, okay? How long do you wait for her to put out in the real world? Forget three strikes you're out. How long do you wait? And if women are saying, I have to think about it. I don't know if I'm comfortable. I'm having my period. I don't know. I don't know you well enough. Do you actually wait? Or do you go get it somewhere else? Tom like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You really do change lives. And I mean, so many people want to say that you're a bad guy and all that, and it's uh, it's crazy. I We're mean, doing important work here. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alex, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay, Alex. Uh, Tom, you want to believe it? I was listening to the radio, and I had this exact same situation happen to me, and it just happened a few hours ago. I finally cut it off and uh, met this girl. She's uh, European, and I'm 22. She's a little bit younger than me. Typically, I don't date younger girls because they tend to have a lot of drama, a lot of baggage, and always want commitment. And, of course, I just want to get tail. But, you know, this girl uh, asked me to hold her you know, at a party. We start making out. She comes over to my place. Everything's going great. Asked me if she could spend the night. I say, sure. She uh, takes everything off but her panties. And, you know, we're, we're going at it for a while, but I can't get them off. And I'm worrying to myself, you know, what's happened? Have I lost my talent? And, uh, you know, she tells me, she's like, you know, I'd love to, but, you know, I'm on my period right now, and I can't. Uh -huh. All right, fine. So, Paul, and I, I take, took that opportunity to tell her, I'm like, you know what? This is fun. This is great. But, I, you know, I want you to know right now, I'm not looking for a relationship. So the last thing I want right now, I got a big relationship. I will not be in a relationship right now. I just want to have fun. If you're okay with that, we can keep going with this. She said, of course, you know, um, I like you a lot, but if, you know, you don't want to be in a relationship, I understand. So, okay. So we start hanging out uh, throughout the week, and uh, I decided to give her a little bit of time. I didn't want to go in there. You know, I wanted to give her three to five days. She came over last night, spent the night completely, you know, got naked, everything. We're in bed, and it's, you know, two, three hours in, and it's driving me insane. And she won't, you know, she won't let me. And I finally asked her, I'm like, listen, you know what I want. You know what this is about. Why aren't you letting me, you know, get in there? And she turns to me, she's like, you know what, I really like you a lot, but um, I'm not ready to have sex with you. And I'm, you know, but, you know, I like spending the night here. I like spending time with you. And, you know, maybe we can just keep this going. And Why would you want to? Exactly. I mean, what, 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 you know, I don't, I don't need any, you know, any girlfriends. I don't need any young girls, you know, sleeping over my room and uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, blocking you from getting any other girls, you know I mean? Uh, That's one thing I think guys don't think about, is that uh, when you have a girl, like this guy who wrote the letter, when you have a girl living at your house, getting naked and never giving you sex, not only is she not giving you sex, but now you can't bring anybody else over. Exactly, exactly. You've screwed was, yourself every which way. Exactly, it was driving me insane. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, my, my, I think my, uh, my penis was a little upset with me. I, couldn't, I had erectile dysfunction for two days because my penis couldn't, it was so disappointed at me. You know, I... <laughs> This this girl, this girl drove me insane. I couldn't believe it. And she, she's European, you know. I thought for sure she's, you know, she's gonna be good to go, you know. And I told her, I told her straight out, this is what I want. She was okay with it. Mm hmm. And you know. All right. So what are you gonna do next? I'm uh, moving on. I got a girl coming in on uh, Saturday, and I'm gonna take care of that. Now, did you tell her? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I told her. I'm like, you know, this is. Dumb. I'm like, you know, you knew exactly what I wanted. You aren't giving that to me. You're a cool girl. I'm sure you're gonna find a nice guy who's gonna take care of you. But I'm not that guy. How did she react to that? Okay, fine, whatever you want. Yeah, she tried, she tried to give me a little bit of attitude. She got upset at me. And she said I was being, you know, really rude to her and blah, blah. 
call me. What, by being honest? You were being rude by being honest? Exactly. I'm like, listen, I know, I'm like, you know what, you may think I'm, I'm an a-hole now. You know, you may think uh, that uh, I'm... A- but you know what? If I did, if I didn't tell you the truth, and later on you're gonna you're gonna hate me, you're gonna think I'm you know I'm the worst guy in the world. So I'm being honest with you. I'm doing you a favor, yeah. And uh, she called me back an hour later and apologized profusely. You know, I was, I was I'm sorry, I was out of line. We should definitely hang out again. What are you doing tonight? Maybe we could catch a movie. Like, no, I'm not gonna spend time with you. You, you know, I, I already wasted you know a precious week trying to get you know a week without sex. It's driving me insane. I, I mean, I can't. It's not worth it to me anymore. Even if I got it, it would, you know it wouldn't be worth it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's the amazing thing. You're saving her time and you time. But there are these women who want these sex-free, sexless relationships where they can say they have a boyfriend, they can uh, have somebody to go out with at night, somebody to buy them drinks or take them out or whatever, and then never, ever have sex. Exactly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bank. I'm not, I, I've never taken this girl. I refuse to take a girl. Until, if she sleeps with me, I may consider it, but that's about it. And, and, and the women who have the gall to be like wanting to know what you're doing on the nights you're not with them, yeah. When they, uh, yeah. they don't put out themselves? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell her, Cheryl, she asked me what I'm doing. I'm going to tell her, you know what, I'm, I'm doing women, you know, because obviously you aren't giving up. You're too young. Yeah, I'm going to tell her that. My yeah. line, I'll give you my line. You can use it. I always say, you know what, you don't have to do a thing because there's always someone else to do the heavy lifting, sweetheart. Exactly. I love what you said, too. It's like girls want a Kendall. You know, they want a guy who dresses nice, is good looking, without any genitalia. That's Drives exactly a cool car. Doing. Yeah, no genitalia. That's right. That's the ideal uh, man for many women. Exactly. Tom, can I ask you for fair to take me out Kobe Bryant style? Absolutely, Alex. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hello, Tom. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. Great. I just um, called to let you know that I pretty much wait about a month. You wait a month. How many times do you see a woman in a month? On average, about 12. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you wait? In other words, uh, I mean, when you say you wait, does that mean you don't have sex with anybody else? Oh, uh, no, no. When, when I'm waiting for a month, I'm pretty much going out there to clubs and bars. All right, so you're still meeting people and having sex with people if it comes up. Yeah, and I'm promoting myself. I mean, I'm pretty. Right. I need to market myself as much as possible. And by the time it comes, I mean, I'll have sex with that bitch. And Do you find that women are unrealistic? Like when you start dating them and you haven't had sex with them, do they think you're being monogamous? Pretty much. Really, I, that's what I think too. I think a lot of them think that we've just given up everybody we date, mm. so that we can be with them. But the reality is, you know, you can't have a monogamous relationship. Uh, unless you've had sex, because but to, to have a monogamous relationship means to have sex with only one person. Mm-hmm. What would what would you call uh, having sex with no people? No relationship. It's nothing. Well, yeah, uh, you can't be monogamous when you haven't had sex. Mm-hmm. So the bottom line is, as far as I'm concerned, until you have sex with a person, they have no right to expect fidelity of any kind. None. And a lot of women are actually crazy enough to think. That we are not going to have sex with other people while they stand there and dangle it like a carrot in front of us. I also noticed that these girls that um, they never give it up that easy, eventually they lose interest in sex. I mean, they just want to have a stable relationship. Yeah. Through my experience. Yeah, well, (laughs) I think they're living in a dream world, Daniel. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I hope the women are learning something here. Hello. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. How are you? I'm doing okay. All right. Uh, me personally, I don't wait at all. Uh, I don't. I don't date a girl unless I've already unless I've already had sex with her. I'm not waiting for anything. Um, I'll hang out with her, but there's no way I'm I'm going to get into a relationship or definitely not let anyone live in my house uh, unless they've up the boot. Yeah, yeah. And and when you're waiting that week, are you still having sex with other people? Yeah, I mean, I'm still having sex with other people. I'll, I'll hang out with them for a week. You know, that's that's my deadline, really. I mean, if I mean, I don't want to hang out with them if they're not going to do anything. I don't want to go out and spend money on them and take them places and deal with their, you know, their drama. Right. I'd rather just get what I want and go on. You know, when I'm hungry, I eat. When I'm thirsty, you know, I drink. And when I want sex, I get sex. Have you noticed when women are making you wait? Have you noticed they love telling you about the other men they've had sex with? Oh, all the time. All, all the, the time, time, right? 
Yeah, when when they're waiting, it's just their mind game. I mean, you just oh yeah, them. my ex boyfriend and I was with him for a year, and he treated me like crap. Yeah, you know, we had sex four or five times a day, and he just treated me like crap. Yeah, you always got to pay for someone else's mistakes. That's women. Well, that, that that's the that's my point. That's why you want to be the one to treat them like crap. Oh yeah, and I am oh, because yeah, that no, they no. they let you know that if you treated them like crap, they'd be putting out for you too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're definitely right there. Oh no, I I, I definitely treat them like I treat them like crap. I do, and that's why I can't keep one for too long. But you know what? There's plenty of them out there, <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. But hey, Tom, can you take me out with the Samuel Adams? Absolutely, Ryan. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Philip on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Professor. How you doing, man? Doing okay, Philip. All right, man. I'm 24 years old. I'm a civil engineer. I study, like you said, and uh, I'm getting places now. Mm -hmm. uh, I met a girl. See, uh, I turned 24, and I noticed women start doing this when when uh, they realize their their ideals are not going the way, and the, the ideals that they made for themselves are not going the way they they. They want them to, and they start wanting to rely on men. So what happens is they start holding out on the sex and this and that. I wait maybe two weeks. I don't need anyone rely on, relying on me. I wait maybe two weeks, and if the girl's not up for it, um, I'm gone. Now, when you say you wait two weeks, does that mean you don't have sex with anyone else during those two weeks? Uh, I, I don't have sex with anyone else in those two weeks. Why not? Any, anything past two weeks? Well, usually I'm busy. That's why I don't have sex. Not that I don't get the... All right, but you would. It, you would if you could. I would. Damn straight, I would. And do you uh, believe that women are unrealistic? That they think that once you've gone out on a date with them, that you're focused on them? Exactly. Yeah, even though they haven't given it up yet, they think that you're not having it with anybody else? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They think... Uh, Modern day relationships are fairy tales. Right. Uh, I don't know. This is a tough world. You know, you gotta you gotta make a lot of sacrifices. And type of relationships, those women that hold, uh, those women that uh, they want you to get into those relationships, uh, they want you to make every sacrifice for them. They they're not thinking about your career, your life, your ideals, your goals, none of that stuff. They want you to take care of them. And that's really unre that's very unrealistic. Yeah, well, I think you you're know? right. I, I think you're right about that. And I thank you, Philip, for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Jeremy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, Tom. Yo, Jeremy. How's it going? All right. Well, I waited five months. With five you. months. Yeah. Now I never had to wait for nothing before ever. But check it out, Tom. The relationship I was in right before her, I had fell off. I fell off the program. I pussified. I became a puss. And I got murdered, emotionally murdered by this girl. So I was, like, really in a bad place when I met this current girl, right? She, uh, she, uh, she was a virgin, and she had a lot of Christian guilt. She wasn't quite, like, down or whatever. And, and I just I felt like I needed to, like, be a monk or whatever, you know, practice my kung fu. And I just didn't really need vaginas all over me at the, at the time or whatever. You didn't? Well, I, I, I was getting very... I just needed to be turned into myself. I need to become a man, you know. I just didn't need vaginas constantly near me at that particular I, moment. Why, wh wouldn't having sex with women make you be a man? Yeah, I mean, but you got to understand, Tom. Like, I, I was fooling around lots of girls at the time. And, right. and when I met this current girl, I, I had a big crush on her. I really liked her. So, like, she wasn't quite into it at first. Then I just decided, well, I'll see where this goes. And it took a good five months with her. But when So you gave up all other women for five months? I didn't have to, though. I mean, I wasn't trying to, like, impress her or nothing. I just really didn't want to, like, I didn't want to, uh, I, I hate talking to people that I don't like. That's the, that, it was really hard for me to time I was in a When you're having sex, who's talking? Yeah, <laughs> I know, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? I mean, like, meeting someone and talking to them, it takes energy out of you, and I didn't really have any. But didn't you have, like, regular booty calls, regular uh, plate spinning that you could uh, go to at any time? Yes, I did, and then I, I kind of, like, laid off of that when I met this girl. Well, see, like, she, I kept thinking she'd be down, like, the next day. I kept thinking it'd be the next day or the next day, and it, it, it took five months, like, literally five months. Right. But, uh, but at that time, like, you know, like, after, like, three months into it, I started to be completely ready again, and I was starting to think about other girls. So I tell her straight up, you know, I don't, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I don't think it's da, da, da. And then I realized there was a big Christian guilt thing with her. It wasn't that she didn't want to. It was just that she felt like she'd go to hell. So, be, you know, we, uh, being a good friend that I am to her, we talked about it, and we worked through it, and now things are great. Well, 
So you'd recommend this to people? No, no. I mean, but if they're like me, like, I mean, I'm not speaking for every guy here, but I think there's certain dudes that, like, at certain times in their life need to lay off a little bit and, like, become themselves. I mean, you ever seen a guy come out of a... No, you see, if you're going to lay off, it should never be because you're with a particular woman. You should lay off... You know, because you're burned out or because you're no, tired right, or because yeah. you got things. But no, but it, it, it just conveniently coincided with the fact that you were, yeah. like, uh, falling like a puppy dog in front of this woman. No, I wasn't no puppy dog, man. I got to tell you straight up, like, it was totally convenient. Just like you said, it was a coincidence that I met her at that time. I probably would have stayed with the booty call thing had I not met her. But that's my yeah. point. You, you, because you met her, you suddenly decided you were burned out. You didn't decide you were burned out before you met her. No, dude, Tom, you got to understand, I fell off with the girl before her. I mean, like, I everything you say and everything you teach, I was, like, losing out. I, I didn't practice none of it, and I, I got literally, like, obliterated. I, I felt like I wasn't even a person anymore, and it took me a minute to, like... You know, like recapitulate myself, you know, and get my personality back and everything. And I wasn't spending too much time with this girl at the time, but, you know, since then, like, you know, since things have started happening, it's become a really great uh, experience. And like I said, like now, like, man, whenever she starts getting out of line or whatever, I just uh, put her in her place. Like you say, it totally works out good. She likes it, too. Well, you put her in her place, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do, man. It's all it's like because you too. You're a great teacher. Unfortunately, uh, uh, you've learned some things here, but I would never, ever wait five months for anybody ever under any circumstances. No way. And uh, I do believe that women are unbelievably insensitive and cruel when they're making you hold out, and then they start telling you about all the other guys they've had sex with. And kind of letting you know that uh, you don't rank as highly as they did. Of course, their position will be, oh, he treated me like crap, but you I care about, and that's why I don't want to be like a slut. Yeah, well, tell you what, dear. You care about me, you better be start being a little more of a slut. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I got a question for you, man. My girlfriend found my porn collection, and she's kind of mad at me. She thinks that masturbation is just like cheating. How old are you? I'm 18. At 18, masturbation is not only a birthright, it's a necessity. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. When you meet a new woman, how long do you wait before she puts out? Forget about my rule. How long do you wait? And um, while you're waiting, are you getting it somewhere else? Just curious. 1-800-5800-866 is our telephone number. It's Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dan. Hey, Tom. Hey, Dan. Hey, this is the first time I'm actually getting through. It's cool. I'm from Seattle. I'm 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I actually have been dating this uh, 20-year-old girl. She's she's young. I'm 26, and and some of my friends and family think she's too young. But anyway, uh, I've been dating her for about, I'd say, about four months now, and uh, sex has been great for a long time. It's been really great. But the last two weeks, no sex. Why? What's that? Why? I have no... The last what do you mean you have no idea? Didn't you ask her? No, I, I mean, she no. said, this is, I, I asked her, I said, well, you know, I'm wearing a rubber, I'm doing everything right. She goes, well, you know, I want to I want to get a depo shot, and I want to uh, either get on the pill or get a depo shot, so I'll be doing that. And this, is, this has been going on for two weeks now. So her excuse is she wants to get a depo shot or get on the pill. Oh, uh, that's good if it's true. Well, that is good, but she's not doing it. It's almost been two weeks. So she hasn't done it yet? No, All right. she hasn't. Well, you let her know. Tell here's what you tell her. Tell her. Well, you know, when you get that done, give me a call, and then keep going out with other people. Well, I've been exclusive with her for like three months. No, well, but months. there's nothing to be exclusive with. What does that mean? You're gonna tell her. You're, if you're not having sex, you can't be exclusive with zero. Okay. <laughs> That's true. You're not having sex with anybody. That's true. So you're gonna tell her. I respect that. Take all the time you need. Call me again when you get that done. Yeah. And then start going out with other people. And if she doesn't like it, screw it and move on. Who cares? 
Yeah. That's her problem. You know what? Going to the doctor. If you can't get a doctor's appointment in two weeks, go to Planned Parenthood. Go to some other family planning clinic. There's plenty of them around Seattle. Plenty of them. Thing, the other thing I was thinking was, is she's been acting distant, too. And uh, I, well, I work a lot. I'm a professional. I make good money. I make good money, Tom. And uh, oh. so, you know, I'm thinking, hey, you know, uh, I was recently married. I've been single for two years now dating. And she's the first real relationship that I've had in a while. Well, Other 20 is too young for a relationship, as we always say. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So uh, lately it's been different. I mean, when you, when you get divorced, 20 is somebody to pound. No, yeah. <laughs> but not somebody to be having a relationship with. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, okay, I'll tell her that then. I'll go ahead and say that's it. Yeah. You know, get it done or, or that's it. So, okay, well, that's the, that's what I needed to know. And I've been listening uh, for about, I'd say, right after my divorce. I, I wish, you know what, I wish that they uh, taught this in high school. I wish they uh, actually tuned I've been it. teaching it here. I don't know where you've been. <laughs> I've, I've been on in Seattle since you were 15. Uh, well, I, I didn't know you existed until I was uh, I was uh, coming from my attorney's office in Seattle going through a divorce, and I flipped you on. I went, wait a minute, this is, makes sense. And you started talking about... Uh, uh, divorcing and, and the situation what, what women are doing nowadays, and so I was just hooked because you just read my ex. You just everything you were talking about at the time was saying this is exactly what I went through. I got married when I was nineteen. Uh -huh. I started making a lot of money, and then right when I made a lot of money, she divorced, and, and that was it. And took you know I'm paying child support. Uh, oh, you got so, a kid too? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I have two of them, and I pay two I pay of more them. Money, I paid more money a month than. <laughs> than some people make. Than she makes. <laughs> than she makes. There you go. I got screwed, Tom. I, 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 if anybody's listening out there, I wish that more guys were listening to you because I got, you know. But I, I'm 26. I'm young. I'm making really good money now, and I'm still surviving. I just, I just got burned. So, uh, you know, I got a whole life ahead of me. But yeah, you were, you hit, you hit it right on the uh, nose there when I was listening to you uh, coming home from uh, my attorney's office. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, everybody I'm talking to now, I just turn on your radio station. I'm like, you got to listen to this guy. you got to keep listening to him. Everything he's saying is right. So, but uh, are, are you still there? No, I left the room. <laughs> well, that's cool. I got through. Um, uh, but thank you. Keep up, keep up the good work, Tom. I think I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm heading in uh, to my house right now. I'm just going to head and nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud, baby. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Nathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. So uh, I've, just, I've just been listening here to uh, some of the guys that have been calling in. I'd just like to tell all the lovely ladies out there that none of us are all that bad. That, that none of us are all that no, bad? I said not all of us. Oh, not all of us are that bad. Yeah. How bad is that? How bad are we? Well, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I heard a couple of callers saying that they're marketing themselves, running around, you know, trying to, you know, get in every, uh, every lady possible. But some of us out here, I think there are some good guys out here that believe in being monogamous. Yeah, but why be monogamous if you're not getting any sex? Well, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I, to be honest, I think... The, you know, the connection is more important than the sex. You oh, know, the connection is like more important. The friendship oh, the is more important yes. because because the sex, you know, it loses its luster. And, oh, uh, yes. Sex, it, well, why ever have sex then, Nathan? Well, uh, you know, it's biology. It's, it's all about procreation. Oh, you I, well, you could just, like, artificially inseminate a girl and then uh, just be your pal. Yeah, I suppose so, but... It, you it, sound like the not, type. Why not have the best of both worlds, you know? Be, have your best friend there that... Because those women you're being so nice to, they're having sex with other guys. Well, I, you know, I, I think I, I, I think that they're, maybe maybe the good ones are far and few between, but I don't think all the ladies are out there. There. Um, just, sweetie, can I tell you something? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, those words just float out of my mouth when I'm talking to such a, an effeminate individual. Oh, I'm effeminate. Oh, okay. you definitely are. Okay. You know, I, is it? I guess you don't like sex all that much. No, I no, I do, I do. You I can do. live with like it or like without it, or you, you have no money and you're used to getting turned down all the time. No, no, I, I, I've, I've, had, I've had my fair share. Of really? Sex. How many women have you had sex with? Uh, I, I'm, I, I lost count a while ago, but I probably, I probably dated. That's because you have over so 30, many fingers. Somewhere over 30? 30 really? Over 30. Not, I'm not in the hundreds like, like my fr my, some of my friends, but, but I, I, I think like, I've had my fair like share. like I am. Huh? 
Yeah, like you. No, right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that much of a player. But I see. Well, you're 31. Your wife's name is what? My my wife's name is Liz. I see. So you are married. No, no, I'm not married. I'm actually, I, I'm not married. We're almost there. We're, we're, we live together. We've been together for quite a long uh, time. Have you had sex with her yet? Yes, I have. You have? Yeah. We're way past that. How we're now, long? We're did, now in, how we're long the honeymoon stage. How long did you wait? How long did we wait? You know, I actually waited a bit of time. I, I how much about time? A month. I waited about a month. A month, which is which is long for me. Normally, I'd be I'd be in there now. Well, but... you just said you're not like the other guys. Well, I'm not saying that I'm I, I'm not saying that I'm. Well, that are you I'm like not the other like... guys or not? Well, some I, there, there have been occasions when I have been, but you know, I, I'm 30 years old. I'm. I'm Don't worry, ladies. Pretty... There are guys who'll wait up to a month. Well, yeah. Like Nathan. Sure. There, 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 are things, there, there are things that are much more important in my life than sex alone. I'll, just, oh, well, I'll bet that's you. true. Hang on a second here. John, what do you want to say to Nathan? Nathan, buddy, what's wrong with you, dude? Come on now. I bet you're six times overweight. I bet you can't pull any fine ladies, and that's why you're the good guy. No, uh, no, no, because... No, no, you know, no, no. Like you probably work at your local Seven Eleven and doing your thing and all that, and that's why you can't pull any fine chicks. No, I, I'm yeah. afraid not. Hey, Tom, if you didn't know, this is actually Star Jones' husband. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you know I, I think I'm a bit... You know what? I don't drink. I don't but smoke. Do? I, used to do, I used to do all the things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a member of Alcoholics Sounds Anonymous. Like you... I, uh, oh, I, 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 uh, I, do, I do quite a... a, a, uh, Did you say quite, you a, quite a... Quite a few good things to, or, or at least to try to try to try to be a good person in this life, and I think that's the only the, that's the best thing you can do. You can be you can be a uh, part the of the problem. The only thing you used to smoke was smoke pull, and that's about it. Oh, well, really? To yourself. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, yeah, if you say if you say so, John. You need to go see a psychotherapist or whatever that you call them. You need mad issues. You need to you know follow Tom's rules, and maybe you could pull a girl under one eighty. Oh. Okay. By the way, how much does your girlfriend weigh there, Nathan? You know, I, I th I'm not I'm not exactly sure. She not she doesn't weigh 180. One, I don't, I don't I, I weigh her. Nathan, be honest. Does she have booby do? What's that? Does she have booby do? I don't know what booby do is. It's where her stomach sticks out far and her boobies do. No, no, she doesn't. <laughs> oh. All right. All right, I was just questioning you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I see you guys think this is funny, huh? Don't you? I mean, it's real funny. Listen to yourself. Well, I mean, Nathan. Now we've gone this far. This tell us me. what she looks like. I What's thought her? we were on. Oh, a, she's thought... very attractive. You know. Well, I, I know what. Well, 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 what would other guys think? We don't really care what you think. Uh, clearly, uh, you have to be happy with what you've got. But uh, uh, we'd like to know what, what would other guys think. Well, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I really can't speak for other people. And, well, and, well know, why don't you just tell us? Height, well, I, you weight, know what? go I, ahead. I can't speak for anybody but Just myself. tell us your height and weight. Come on. What's that? It, height she, and weight, herself? please. She's about 5'8", she's about, five, eight, about 115, 120 pounds. No, she's not. I mean, she's 5'4", 215. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you know it, what? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't need to prove myself to Is she a butterface? What's that? Is she a butterface? <laughs> no, no, she's very attractive. Right. She's a sweet, sweet lady. Hey, yeah. does, can she speak for herself, Nathan? Yeah. All right. So that sandwich is out of her mouth right now. Did you meet her in a twelve-step <laughs> meeting? This is a. This is a. I, I can't believe. No, I didn't. I did not. No, I did not. That's one of the great places to meet chicks. Yeah, so they say some a lot of church people do basement, that, but it also can pick up some codependent no, chick. Oh yeah, can, uh, to help you out a lot. They put out can, tonight. You can, you can uh, it can allow you to live a you know a free a life free of uh, addiction and yeah. uh, and uh, and the rest. Uh, yeah, well now instead of being addicted to alcohol, you're addicted to meetings. You've well, traded one addiction for another. <laughs> I suppose so. And now you're now you're addicted to talking about going to meetings. What's that? It, now no, you're addicted no, no, to no, talking about saying, going just, to meetings. They need a twelve-step program above, to get I'm people off twelve-step programs. I'm above, I'm above it. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above John. I'm above you too. Really? Yeah. And I think are you our higher power? Out there that are, that are, are you the doorknob they've saying. been talking about? What? I, I, I just I believe that there there are there are other people there, there's a there's a better there's a better life out there yeah, okay. you know and and it's not Very about good. it's not about running around in a club I know God you know, took you out of the get, dumpster get, get, there get, is get, a better get, life out there buddy and it's called uh, you, got, you guys are living in Tom's life like crisis you know crisis I, I mean talk about weight Tom how much you weigh you weigh what you weigh close to three hundred pounds no I don't I actually you're wrong all right. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you may I, not have been not listening. Here. I've been on the Atkins diet for two I, I, years, Bob. You know, all right. Thank you, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Oh, well, well, it was well, a pleasure. Was all it was ours. Great. Believe me. Like is Tom. Like is one eight hundred.
There are three groups you can get away with making fun of. The deaf, because they're not listening anyway. Those who are mentally retarded. How the hell are they going to organize a group? And thirdly, people with Alzheimer's. Because even if they object to the content of the program, they will forget to show up at the protest. Those are the three groups we attack regularly. This is the Tom Likas Show.